Ukrainian officials report explosions in and around the Russian-occupied cities of Berdyansk and Mariupol. They say at least five strikes targeted Russian positions in Berdyansk on Sunday. And one official says the explosions in Mariupol caused casualties but gave no further details. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian military says Russia launched one of its largest drone attacks yet on Sunday. It coincided with Kyiv Day, the anniversary of the city's founding more than 1,500 years ago. Kyiv's mayor also says more explosions have been reported across the Ukrainian capital in recent hours. There are no reports of injuries, and the mayor wrote on Telegram, the air defense is at work. CNN's Fred Plankin is in Kyiv with more on these attacks. Well, the Ukrainians are calling this one of the largest attacks using those Iranian-made Shahed drones since Russia started its full-on invasion of Ukraine. The Ukrainian military is saying that of 59 Shaheds that were launched towards its territory, they were able to take out 58. So that's obviously a pretty big success rate there for the Ukrainian military and its ever-improving air defense. Uh, certainly, the bulk of those drones seem to be directed at the Kiev region, the Kiev and surrounding region. And there was some damage that was caused. There were two people who were killed. There were a lot of buildings that were damaged uh, as well. Most of that, the authorities say, came from falling debris. Also, there were some drone parts apparently found near a warehouse that had also sustained some damage as well. There was also some pretty dramatic video that came out uh, from the Chernihiv region. That's in the north of Ukraine with border guards there saying that they fired into the sky when they saw and heard those Shahed drones approaching and managed to take one of them down using small arms fire. President Zelensky uh, uh, of Ukraine, he came out and he praised the forces that are fighting uh, against uh, those drones, fighting against missiles as well, the air defense forces. He called them heroes here in Ukraine for keeping so many people on the ground safe. At the same time, the Ukrainians pretty angry at the Iranians for giving those drones to the Russians. In fact, an advisor to Ukraine's presidential administration, he came out and he warned the Iranians that there could be retaliation. Fred Plekin, CNN, Kiev. Ukraine's military says it's destroyed almost 70 aerial targets launched by Russia in its latest onslaught overnight. That includes more than three dozen cruise missiles, as well as Iranian-made drones and a reconnaissance drone. A police official in Kyiv says residential buildings and infrastructure in several districts were damaged, but no one was killed or injured. This comes just a day after Ukraine said Russia had launched one of the largest drone attacks to date against Kyiv. CNN Salma Abdelaziz is here for more on this. So there is a huge focus on drone strikes on the capital. Obviously, Russia trying to make gains in the east. What, what is the strategy here to focus so much firepower on Kyiv? So overnight, this massive barrage yet again, uh, something like 67 air targets, according to Ukrainian officials, taken out. Many of those, as you mentioned, drones and missiles. The targets, Ukrainian officials say, were military infrastructure and civilian infrastructure. And this comes just a day after on Sunday, Ukraine says it witnesses it witnessed the largest assault by drones since the conflict began. Nearly mm. 60 drones, most of those, the overwhelming number of those, Shahed, Iranian-made drones being fired uh, across Ukraine. Most of those drones, all but one of those drones, according to Ukrainian officials, was taken out. So what do we take from this? Yes, as you mentioned, it seems that there is an uptick here in Russian assaults far from those front lines on other areas, civilian areas across Ukraine. And yes, this terrifies the citizens, the civilians of Ukraine, but it also forces Ukraine to use up valuable munitions. Mm. One of those Shahed drones, they're very cheaply made, one of those Shahed drones cost about 20 times less than the missile required to take out the drones. You can mm. see there that Russia is forcing Ukraine to use these valuable resources at a time that it really needs them on the front line. But for Ukrainian officials, the lesson here is air defenses are working. The weapons that NATO has supplied, that is saving lives. And just briefly on the wider geostrategic picture here, we've been hearing some fairly alarming remarks from the Belarusian leader, Alexander Lukashenko, and his ever closer union with Russia when it comes to nuclear and military assets. Yes, some chilling comments uh, from Lukashenko. Of course, uh, Belarus has essentially been used as a satellite state throughout this conflict. Mm. Over the course of the last several days, about a week, uh, Russia has begun 
begun, rather, transferring tactical nuclear weapons to Belarus. Of course, Ukraine and its allies, the United States, NATO, see that as a violation of international law. But Lukashenko making these comments to state media just the other day, saying that nuclear weapons would be available to anyone who joins the Russia-Belarus alliance. I actually want to read you the comment because it is so alarming. It's very simple. Join the United States, United Union state of Belarus and Russia. That's all. There will be nuclear weapons for everyone. Mm -hmm. And you can see how that begins to worry international actors. And I suppose he's talking about post-Soviet states like Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, etc. Salma Abdelaziz, thank you so much.